just frantically checking everything and all the updates with regards to the president's speech. It was moved till tonight, so uh, a lot of us were obviously listening into that, checking what people have to say. Uh, there's no hard lockdown, um, thankfully, from, from a South African point of view, um, so we can be happy about that at least. Um, it's moved to an adjusted level one, so currently we are still under lockdown, still have to follow all the procedures, etc. It's still up in the air, though, with regards to what's going to be happening with other countries. Uh, we know the Netherlands uh, tour has been postponed or cancelled or whatever. So, and I thought we could could have still played, um, <laughs> if I think about it, Aditya. I would have said, like, you guys are here in the country, you could have played one more game, maybe played over the weekends, maybe try to, like, fit in all the games before they leave, but unfortunately, that's the case. Um, that's how it goes. Um, but, yeah, it's a Sunday evening, and we're back with our fans. Going to read what you guys have to say in your... Um, in your comment section, Khalid, I see you wanting to watch the Man United Chelsea game first, eh? Yes, um, of course, you have to watch United, of course, and always going to watch United, and that's the case with us. But, um, yeah, also the president was speaking, so we needed to also check what they he had to say and and pick up what he had to say. So, Aditya is with me tonight. How are you doing, Aditya? How's your weekend been? Yeah, it's been quite good and uh, good to see Test Cricket back on with uh, India versus New Zealand. And uh, we have um, a Test debutant, Shreyas Iyer, who has scored a century and a half century on debut. So, I'm very happy for him. Uh, but yeah, day five promises to be exciting. So, let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Interesting, because South Africa is supposed to learn from this. I just hope that there is going to be an India series. Um, it's, it's one of those things where I feel we don't know what to do until it's announced, unfortunately. Yeah. So we're going to have to wait and see and see what happens in that particular, in that regard, because, I mean, an adjusted level one is what we we were on. So the COVID situation is still they're monitoring everything, etc. I I couldn't read every single post that was posted over here because I get the posts updated to me and they get um, someone actually updates me with everything that happens in it. And I haven't read through every single one of them, but the, the main thing is what I want to hear is whether we're going to go on a level, a hectic level lockdown. Um, so happy that we are not there. Um, we've got Lorenzo in the comments saying, we all know Test Cricket is the realest format of the game and I like that comment because I agree. Um, for me, Test cricket is the excuse the pun, the true or the or the cliche, the true test of the game because endurance gets tested, mental strength, uh, with regards to tactics, strategy, uh, patience, every single aspect of your human being gets tested in a test match. So um, I like. I think that test cricket is the one way that a cricketer can be tested its best in the best possible way. And, and it is my favorite format. And maybe a lot of the younger generation maybe look at it and say, oh, it's too long. or Oh, no. Um, they prefer the shorter formats because test cricket takes too long. But that's the beauty of it. For you to be able to con control your, your, your brain and, and to be able to control your thoughts and your strategies and make sure that you can last that long for with regards to concentration and be patient is is what is very important with regards to that um so it's excellent that we can still have this cricket i hope they don't change the format because there was a lot of talks before about maybe changing it to four days and stuff i don't want that to happen i want the true format of the game to remain because it really is the true test of all cricketers. Um, what's your thoughts on that? I know you are form you have you are a um, a lover of all cricket um, when it comes to that, uh, Aditya. But what can you add to that? Uh, yeah, I think. Look, I think cricket is for everyone. You know, sometimes. Um, 
I and I think this is something I heard from from Kumar Sangakkara. So um, it made sense to me that you know cricket is for everyone. You know there are people like us who've been watching cricket for years, and we started we started following the game a lot before T Twenty was introduced. You know, so therefore we have a love for for Test cricket. You know, but then there's a, there's a, a new segment of the cricket audience who really like white ball cricket. So, you know, I think cricket's for them as well. But in saying that, look, Test cricket will always be my favorite format because the one thing that you can be sure about with respect to Test cricket is that the better side always wins. We can never say that about T20 cricket, for example, because in T in T20 cricket, you can be a hero in three balls. You know, so if you look at the Australia versus Pakistan game, for instance, you know Australia didn't bowl as well as Pakistan. They dropped five catches, but one dropped catch from Pakistan and three hits from Matthew Wade turned the game. So was Australia actually the better team? Probably not. Pakistan played better, but you know in Test cricket, the better team always wins, and. Um, as you said about patience and you know managing the mind and you know it's a test of endurance all of those things i agree with all of that yeah there is a comment over here for you aditya that i'm seeing um particularly staying on the on, on india who do you drop for kohli oh well, that's the million dollar question eh been been thinking about that a lot myself um, it's it's very hard to drop Shreyas Iyer now, given that he scored 105 in the first innings and 60 odd in the second innings. It's very hard to drop him. Um, some say that the obvious choice is going to be Ajinkya Rahane, but then I also don't know how you can drop your your vice captain. I know he's had a lean run uh, of late, and he hasn't been at his best for a really long time. Um, but you know what I think what I would do is um, I would probably drop Cheteshwar Pujara. I think that's what I would do. I drop Cheteshwar Pujara, have um, have Shubman, have uh, Surya Kumar Yadav bat at three, Virat Kohli at four, Shreya Zayur at five, and so on. Hmm. I mean, no, I'm sorry, they are... Ajinkya Rahane, Shreya Zayur, and so on. Yeah, I mean, there is a couple of guys, well, text calling for Rahane Z. Um, do, would you give him extra chances? There has been quite a lot of criticism that he's been getting all around. Hmm. Um, yeah, look, I think... Oof, I think Rahane is... You know, I feel sorry for him. You know, because... I think he's such a brilliant tactical mind and he's a really he's, he's an excellent person you know so you never want to see a guy like him be dropped you know unceremoniously but at the same time i do think he needs a break i think he he needs to review his technique and see where he's going wrong uh, because like there is a problem there is a something something is up with Rahane, you know, mentally, and um, you know the struggle is real for him. He's not able to, he's not able to provide that stability in the middle order that um, we know he can provide. Uh, so yeah, I think more than any, I think more than being dropped, whatever. I think Ajinkya Rahane needs rest desperately. Um, so yeah. Has he played enough? Do you feel he's played enough cricket for 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 rest? You, you know, he has like he's he's been on the go for for the last six months. Also, you know, he played well. He played the he played the England series that was played in India. Then he played the first leg of the IPL. Then there was a bit of that break. Then he went to England as well. Then he played the IPL, and now he's here playing New Zealand. So. I think he's been on the road for quite a while, uh, but um, look, I think he needs he needs rest. He needs rest mainly because he's struggling with his with his technique with mm -hmm. his form. You know, I think he needs time away from the spotlight. 
it'll do it'll do a world of good mm. Another question for you here, yeah, I'm putting you on the spotlight here because there's a lot of questions coming in for you. How come the stadiums yeah. are half empty for test cricket in India? Too much emphasis on the IPL perhaps? Uh, good question. Uh, look, I think stadiums are not allowed. They're not allowed to be operating at full capacity, if, if I'm not mistaken. And um, because of because of COVID, COVID regulations. The other thing is, uh, the air quality has been has been terrible, particularly in that part of the country. You know, in in New Delhi and UP, the a, the AQI has been around four hundred. Last week in Mumbai, the AQI was around three hundred and forty five. So it's not advisable to be outdoors in that environment for particularly long periods of time. Um, so that's one issue. But I think. The reason that you're seeing half empty stadiums is because they're not allowed to be operating at full capacity. Mm. I mean, South Africa, we were getting towards uh, 2,000 people per per game in the stadium only. So that's that's a little. Um, so, yeah, at least India is getting a lot of guys in the stadium um, still. You know, that's, that's still a lot of people. Half the empty stadium is still a hell of a lot of people that are allowed to go watch those games. But, yeah, let's let's get into it. Um, let's get into the discussion of today. Uh, I really wanted to chat about the future of South African cricket, particularly because of the way Calvarena and Zubay Ramza looked in the match against the Netherlands. I know some people say, oh, but it's just the Netherlands. Uh, I don't like to use that because it's, I, I like to see our players adapt to certain situations and conditions, etc., and and what they do. And I think that what... Zubair Ramza and Verena have done did together in this particular format was was excellent to see, and when I'm when I look at the future, it's, I'm such a massive advocate for younger players. Like we all know this, um, I'm a massive massive advocate for for guys to be given an opportunity um, if they are playing well specifically as well. So I hope that South Africa persists with Carl and and. Uh, I was going to say an Aditya now, <laughs> with Kyle and Hamza in the middle order, um, and hope that they can take their partnership further and grow that partnership because, I mean, what they've done in domestic cricket uh, as a captain and vice captain CP, they're really going to be able to learn from each other for the future. Then you've got a guy like Yanam and Milan in the order as well, a young blood coming through the system. I think South Africa can have such a young core around the likes of Aidan Markram and Rassi van der Dissen and Quentin de Kock. And a good young core around them will be perfect because I think that this team will play with, with, with freedom. And it's very good that we have these guys in the setup. And I think they should prolong with these guys. And I would like to see some guys get given opportunities now leading up. It's such a pity that this... Netherlands series was called off because now we've been robbed from an opportunity to maybe see Ryan Rickleton play every single time he's been unlucky this year. He's been in such great form domestically and then he gets robbed of, from an opportunity to play. Uh, and <clears throat> it's so such a it's so sad to see because he's such an amazing talent. And I would like to actually see him to see what him and Quentin de Kock could do at the top of the order. That would be such a devastating opening pair an opening partnership. So, yeah, it's, it's something that we have to live with currently. And others hope that things can remain in check and that South Africa don't be, can get themselves out of this at that what COVID situation that we're in at the moment, that we can keep it under control, that we can do the research that's needed so that we can eradicate this and, and prevent the, the, the virus from spreading. Please, people in South Africa, please get vaccinated. Uh, it's something that you that I feel you you need to do if you want to to still live a normal life in society going forward. So I hope you guys do do that um, so that we can get cricket back, we can get sports back, and we can get back into stadiums again and follow the rest of the world with regards to that. When you're looking at South Africa's team right now, there's a lot of space for for experiments, um, Adija. There's a lot of room for ex for experiment uh, experimental. Selection. I think that I wasn't a big fan of us selecting so many older guys 
when there are younger guys doing as well or better than these players in the domestic system in South Africa? Uh, yes, yes, I agree. But I, th I, I think with the first ODI selection, my my concern was that they hadn't picked a balanced team. You know, with five with five bowlers in a team, you know, I think you're you're uh, you're taking an unnecessary risk because until Epic Lupayo has not been in the best of form. He played an incredible innings that day. And it was it was a treat to watch, you know. I watched it. I watched the highlights of it multiple times after. You know, he was he was seriously good. Um, uh, he was he was seriously good, um, but um, you know, with with his bowling, it still remains to be seen whether he's confident. Um, that uh, you know, so if if you're if he's not that confident and you still need 10 overs from him, then I think that's that's unfair to the team and it's unfair to Antile. Uh, but at the same time, um, you know, I, the onus is on is on the team management to make sure that even in in Loki series against the Netherlands, uh, it's their responsibility to ensure that they put out a balanced team, even if they don't have their first choice players. You know, you can't expect Keshav Maharaj to uh, to make these. Uh, you, you can't expect him to have these brainwaves all the time. You know, and, and rescue rescue the team with his captaincy. You know, so you do have to give him more options. You know, playing five bowlers is, is simply not good enough. Uh, so I think that was my main concern with the team. Uh, but you know, other than that, it is it was an opportunity to play younger players like. Kyle Verena and and Subir Amza and both both were excellent, you know. But you know what I really like most about both of them is that they have solid red ball foundation, you know, which allows them to recognize their games in white ball cricket even better. You know, and we've talked about this extensively with uh, with other players, all of whom confirm that playing red ball cricket helps their white ball games. So I think that's what I like most about uh, Katharina and Zubair Amza. And I'm sure that it will continue to hold them in good stead. And Verna knows this is like our favorite conversation right now that we're having. Uh, before we uh, welcome to the show, Verna. Also, and um, I want to ask you, I don't know if you watched the president's speech. Is there anything that you can, that you took out of there? Or if you haven't, then it's okay. I've already updated some of the guys. But is there anything that you took out there that you can maybe tell the fans? Uh, otherwise, yeah. you can go. Otherwise, you can no. go straight into uh, in this discussion. I missed the speech. I just saw a quick summary that it seems like basically nothing has really changed. He just wants everybody to get vaccinated, but it doesn't seem like anything really has drastically changed from what it was before he spoke today. So I don't think we have to look at it too much. Um, hopefully it stays that we're going into December. I, it would be sad if we don't get the series against India. Um, I would be just as upset if the under-19s can't go on and play the World Cup next year. So hopefully all of that, everything will go smoothly. Um, you know, as you say, I'm a big advocate for playing the younger guys. And that's also why I think everybody needs to see these under-19 guys playing on the world, world stage next year. So that's definitely something to look out for in January. Um, the game on Friday, obviously I wasn't on the show on Friday, but I did watch most of our innings, our batting innings. Um, I was happy, happy with Hamza and uh, Avrena taking the game on, pick, putting on that big partnership. Um, I thought Hamza started slowly, but he got into it later on, and it didn't really matter that much because Verena was quick off, out of the blocks. He was going at the run of all. Good going. But I, I, I think I did say beforehand that I wasn't very happy with the balance either. Um, I don't know when the last time was that, that Andile both his full 10 overs and I don't think expecting Andile to bowl 10 overs and Wayne to bowl 10 overs was really the right the right option um it, it could have really backfired um especially because we don't know what his, his bowling form is like at this at this stage so yeah but yeah disappointed overall that the series is, is basically done so we don't have any 
for that cricket. Hopefully the SAA tour will go on full steam ahead. Um, I'm I'm really looking forward to watching those guys. I I'm so sad about Ryan Rickleton. I really wanted to see him in this series play to play in the series. I was looking forward to see him play in the Pakistan series. He never got the game. Then he didn't get this first game, which I couldn't understand. And I thought, okay, well, hopefully he gets the next two. And now there isn't the next two. So I really feel for him. He's in great form. So, I'd, uh, man, I would even get him into the ACA squad if it was possible. But I don't think they can do that. So, and now now the, the four-day series is like, you know, better for all for the Division One size. I think they're only playing from the 17th of December again. So he can't even go back and play immediately again. So... I think he must be just as frustrated as the fans are at this stage. So, yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, I, it, it's really is a shame. And I just really, really hope that the India series goes ahead as scheduled. I hope so. Because we were waiting in anticipation for this cricket season to kick off. Uh, me personally, I was hoping that it will obviously increase all our views and everything as well on, on this channel. So now it's kind of on a halt. And I was hoping that we got to chat about a lot of the youngsters and the way Zubair Ramza and the way that someone like Zubair Ramza and Calvarena came together on this particular in this particular game. It really gave us hope, you know, like, oh, we're going to get an opportunity to speak to to some uh, youngsters, see how they perform, speak about them, talk about them, and hopefully one of them would put up their hands, or two of them, or three of them would put up their hands to get into that 2023 squad. So, unfortunately, that didn't happen, and uh, that's not going to happen right now, so we're going to have to wait and see what happens with India now. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of an of a issue. I, I haven't been happy the way George linder has been managed either in this particular white ball arena. Um, I see it also in the fans. Someone asked, I think Dex, yeah, Dex asked what's happening with Linda's future. I think he still has a future in the White Bull Arena. I think they want him to work on his batting. That's my assumption. If George George Linda was picked primarily because of his batting, it wasn't because of his spin bowling alone. That's my view on this. They saw him as a six that could hit the ball at the park. And he Yes, he's a good spinner, and yes, he's, he's great at that. But we do also have very good specialist spinners walking around, like Debray Shamsi and Keshav Maharaj and Bjorn Fortein, who have won finals for their team domestically and in Zanzi with the ball. George has won games for the Cobras with the bat, and I think that was the aspect of his game that they thought he really was going to show to the world. And he hasn't really come to the party with a bat at the national international level quite yet. So we are hoping that he can, and that's what we want to see from him. So when you're playing for India and you're playing in India, he needs to be in that squad and be utilized. But he needs to work on his batting. Didn't he take five four against Pakistan in the test series in Pakistan? Yeah, test series, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he's yeah. So he's a quality bowler. There's no doubt about that. You know, and uh, generally we've seen Keshav make that switch from being a red ball specialist for years to then making it into the white ball arena. So, yeah, I mean, the quality is definitely there. No doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. But if I'm if I'm talking for NASA selectors, et cetera, I remember the buzz around George when he was, before he got selected. I remember the press conferences before he got selected too. The main question was about finding a number six big hitter that can hit the ball out of the ground, an all rounder that can that can hit the ball, that can that can add variations with the ball as well as smack the ball out the ground. And George Linda was one of those guys on the list because when he was playing, that was primarily his job for the Cobras. The Cobras used to utilize him as that number six batter um, in the in the white ball arena, and he used to play some finishing roles with a bat and his batting for me is the reason why they wanted to pick him as that extra bowler um he's added a lot of it he's, he's in, his bowling's improved a lot because he used to only have that one delivery you know he used to bowl these these shorter type of spin deliveries 
And his bowling has matured a lot over the years. I think bowling with Shamo, being with guys like Bjorn Vertain and 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 so many others, Kesha Maharaj, and being in contact with him has really improved his bowling a lot. But but he still to me was always an all rounder. You never look, he was never a bowling all rounder for me ever. When I looked at George, if you look at him for his domestic side particularly in the longer format, he bats higher up. So you would see him bat at number five or number six. So he used to save the Cobras a lot with the bat as well. Um, that's one of those things that where I feel that he's been underrated on and people are maybe overlooking that part of it. I feel that if he was putting runs on the board, there was there's an, it was a no-brainer for the for selectors to pick him up in the, in the team because I don't think his spin bowling is better than Keshav right now. I think Keshav's game is a lot better than he is when it comes to being that second spinner. But with the bat, if he can improve his, his form internationally with the bat, then he, he takes Keshav's place in the side, I feel. Or you can play a third spinner um, and, and, and let him take that number seven or number six spot as an all-round in the team. So that is also another possibility. But then you've got Dwayne Pretorius as well as a seamer, all-rounder. You've got Sylvia and Mulder knocking on the door. So, yeah, it, it, I do feel a little bit sad for George because he hasn't really been given the opportunities he deserves because he's, he's for, with, with regards to his bowling, he's been bowling excellently. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things that... I don't know. You have to look at it in that in that in that way because definitely in the longer form, at Keshav pips him for the spot every single day of the week. Um, so in the shorter format, the uh, Brayshams is our best spinner. Uh, Keshav's bowled well as well. You could see in the T20 domestic competitions, are, he was excellent over there. Um, and Bjorn Fortein has bowled in as one finals, Lumzanzi Super League finals for the for the Rocks, opening the bowling for 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 the Paul Rocks in both. Bowling excellently. So, yeah, it's something that I, I just thought about. I mean, I would like to see George Linder get more opportunities, ultimately. Um, but I, I do feel that he can bat a lot better, and we haven't seen the best of George quite yet, particularly with the bat. Anyone can go. Yeah. <laughs> go for it, Bona. All right. Yeah, I think... It, it came down to a bit of bad luck and bad timing for George because obviously he had been playing the whole year, but with with Timba's injury, they were quick. They were scampering to find a captain to replace him in the Sri Lanka series, and they didn't feel in what they had in the current side that they had the right captain to lead the team in that series and to lead them possibly at the World Cup if Timba hadn't recovered in time to play in that World Cup. So then they look back, you know, who, who would be the best next captain, which probably was Keshav because of how he had led the Dolphins in the, on the domestic team. So then they decided, well, that meant that Keshav had to come into the side. But the thing is, he wasn't one of the three original spinners. That meant leaving out one of the three spinners um, in the main squad going to the World Cup. And then they had to choose which one it would be. So it probably came down to being Fortain or Linda. And I think George was just very unlucky to miss out. Um, I don't think it was necessarily the right thing to leave Lin George out. I would have definitely had him in there. But I think it, it came down to a bit of bad luck um, on his behalf. Um, he was pretty good with the bat against Pakistan in the in the T20 series we had here. And they, after they saw him doing good, they even promoted him up the order as a bit of a pinch hitter um, in one of the, the last few games. So there's definitely the potential is there to... to it that type of form in, in the limited overs format as well with the bat. So it, it's definitely there. He just needs his opportunities again. He, he's definitely more than good enough. Um, you saw that 50 he made now in the SAA game against India. He looked very well set. No, no real troubles until that delivery he got out on. So, yeah, I think it was just a bit bad luck. I really felt for him. I also, I also thought it was unfair having played the whole year, then suddenly not playing. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's not great. Um, Keshav is a great bowler. I do feel that George can bring more 
in terms of balance, if he does bring more of the bat, then he would bring more than Keshav does. But Keshav does bring that experience as a captain. So it's it's a hard balance to find. Now the question is, if you're looking at a third spinner, it will probably come in between Fortein and Linde mm. rather than, than Linde okay. and Keshav. So can I throw another spanner into the works over here? Because when you look at it, when I look at the team makeup, I don't look at it as Bjorn Fortein that kept him out of the team. I look at it as Vian Mulder kept him out of the team. Because Possibly. was it necessary? Was it necessary for us to have a second seam all rounder that hasn't really played much T20 cricket? Was it necessary yeah. for that? Because Vian didn't as a backup for Dwayne Pretorius, was it really that necessary? Um in the UAE. I I, th I actually think in the UAE it was the right call to not go with the extra spinner. As you probably saw throughout the tournament, the pace bowlers were more effective than the spinners generally. That the spinners kept the, the economy rate down, but they didn't pick up a lot of wickets. It was mostly the pace bowlers and the, the seeming all rounders that took the wickets um, throughout, and which was this, the case in last year's IPL as well. So I don't think that was net, that was the wrong call, only going in with three spinners and having the the backup. Um, seeming all rounder in in Mulder, but not not that Mulder is really at that place yet where i would say i would definitely put him in the first 11 in in a t20 squad yet i don't think we have ha we really have that guy to back up pretorius at this stage i don't think um Mulder or or Pechlukwayo is is on this on the place to to really replace him at this stage so if if pretorius gets in the injured it'll be interesting to see who will play if it will be Mulder if it, or if it will be Andile. Mm. Um, probably Mulder at this stage, having been sort of picked ahead of Andile in the in the World Cup squad, in the main squad. Um, and he did decently against Ireland um, with the bat. He made that 30 odd, which was pretty good, but it's it's not a lot to go by. But I don't, generally, I haven't really seen Mulder as a T20 player. He doesn't, he's, he doesn't really have that real destructive game at this stage with the bat. Um, we need an explosive, Bats, batting, seam bowling all rounder. Maybe it's Delano Potriter. Maybe it is. There's a few guys that that might that you might say could be there. But in terms of not picking George, yeah, it's a it's a tough one. He could have he could have easily been picked in, ahead of Mulder in the main squad. Mm. Um, but I don't think that this the conditions were necessarily that conducive to spin it. I would say. We would have played three spinners like we did in Sri Lanka or the West Indies. Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at it from a from a the amount of games that Vian played. You know, it was like almost it was quite a shock for me to see Vian Mulder into the brought back into the T20 side when he hasn't really played much T20 cricket. And even for the Lions, I mean, he seems to be behind a guy like Delano Putrita, for example. When he was still playing for the Lions, etc. So I, I figured um, that Michal Pretorius would even get a game ahead of and even of, Michal of Mulder. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting that they went back to him so quickly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's this, uh, that was just something that I wanted to add him because it was, uh, the easy choice would be to go straight for oh it's beyond for Tain because they're both sub sp uh, left arm spinners. So that's the yeah. easy route to go. But I was looking at it and I was just thinking from an all rounder perspective. Because I see George as an all-rounder, and if you watched any of my interviews with George back in the past, he would have he spoke about his batting specifically. I always saw him as a batting all-rounder. I never saw him as a spinning all-rounder from a spinner first and then a batter. That's never how I saw him because he used to put on the runs with a bat. Um, he's worked a hell of a lot on his bowling over the years, um, so and it's improved a lot. So that's how I saw him personally. Um, but I don't know, maybe some other people see it that other way. And maybe because of his performances for the national side with the ball, people automatically will fall into that park and say, you know, he's a he's a um a bowling order. We we see a lot of players that are all rounders in domestic cricket. Like Vian Mulder is another one. A lot of people will say he's a bowling all rounder because he bowls well for the Proteus. But Vian's always been a top order batter. Throughout his career as a schoolboy, right through domestic cricket, he's always been in the middle top order. So his batting was always the thing that that stood out to me. The same with a guy like like um, like Bryce Parsons. Bryce is taking wickets at the moment, but he's a top order batter. He's always been a top order batter for me. Number three is his batting position. I've watched him score 
hundreds before in schoolboy cricket, 80s, hundreds, top of the order, batting number three. But all the attention is on his bowling right now because it seems to me that these guys are getting more um, luck in the bowling department than the batting department. Uh, so it's crazy to think of it in that way. Um, and to think that so many people are can get confused because of the international. Maybe it's easier to bowl in international cricket than bat, eh, Verna? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, it's a tough one to call. It, it, it's, but it's strange because it, it happens that some people start out as a bat, batsman who can bowl a little bit and end up being a bowler who can bat a little bit. Or vice versa. So you have Steve Smith, who started as a leg spinner who could bat a little bit, who now only bats really. Sometimes he bowls some of his leg spin. You have Kevin Peterson, who started off as a off spinner who could bat a little bit, and he ended up being an excellent batsman who barely bowled. So even though we could say that Vian Mulder started off as a batting or runner's main thing as batting and bowling, it's not necessarily means that that's how it ended up. We wanted to be that way. We want him to contribute a lot with the bat, obviously. But we can't say how it will go necessarily. If you if you look at players in the past, roles change over time. Yeah. Hopefully also Andile Pechelkwai can come to the party and keep his form. You know, he's had yeah. his sporadic performances. He has all the talent in the world to be a great batter. Um, and I hope that he works on his batting a little bit more. He looked leaner. He looked fitter in this match, particularly. So I think he's been working hard on that. And all the best to him in the future as well, because I, we really need our all-rounders to perform. I want all players to be in form. That's what I want. I hope that we have a whole group of players that are just playing excellently that we can pick from. Um, so it's I hope that that happens. Always good to have competition. <laughs> it's, it's always, always good, good to have, have competition. So hopefully, I I would love Andile to get into batting and bowling form. It it has been a struggle over the last few years. And I, I have said personally that I think he should go to the domestic scene and really find his form again. Um, but it's good. It's it's great to see his, his quick fire. What was it? 48 or something um, at the 200 strike. It was great to see. Even if he got a few easy deliveries to put away, he still had to put it away. Um, so that was good to see. Uh, good to see him striking the ball cleanly. Um, I would have loved to mm. see how his, his bowling went. Uh, so it's, it's a shame that we only got one half. Yeah. And then because I was driving past, well, I was driving through Pretoria on Friday and it was bucketing down and I knew they weren't going to finish that game. It was definitely not going to happen. So it, yeah. it's a shame. But I didn't expect like the whole series to end there because I was driving, I wasn't really caught up on everything. And by the time I got to where I was going, the whole series was all, almost um, called off and then obviously it was later in, um, in the weekend so that was really disappointing one moment i think okay yeah we, we did well at the end with our betting let's see how this goes let's just see how this impacts the rest of the series oh wait there is no rest of the series mm. yeah i would like to get your 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 comments on the main topic over here that we we have is the headline do you do, i know it's maybe too we've seen too little of them as a pair but could you see a South African ODI team with built around the likes of Carl Verena and, and Zubair Hamza. They looked like they were in sync 100% in this particular match. I know it's against the Netherlands, but uh, it seems like they understand each other. It's the way they scored their runs, not the fact that they did just score runs. Yeah, they looked good, but the, the thing is they're probably going to have to wait their, their turn because obviously nobody's going to replace Rossi at this time. Nobody's probably going to replace Miller at this time, especially the role he plays. Neither of those who really would fill the type of role Miller plays, the destructive type um, at the end. Um, probably, I would say Markram as well, but Markram still needs to, to get that ODI form. So maybe maybe one of them can, can sneak Markram out if he doesn't start to deliver in, in that format. So that Maybe that's a possibility one of them can, can sneak in. It, it'll be hard to displace um, some players. If Tem Temba is obviously the captain as well, we have Quenny at top at the top with uh, hopefully Yanaman. Yanaman should be his open yeah. partner from now on in ODI. So that's that's two part spots sealed. And you have Temba at three, Rasi four, Miller five. So there's not a lot of room there. 
maybe you can sneak in mm. um, Verena at six and then an all rounder and the bowlers. But at this stage, you probably won't see both of them playing. And I mean, I would love to see Ryan Rickleton in that in that team, but sometimes you just have to wait your turn. Unfortunately, um, yeah. If it if it so happens that one of those guys go on a really bad run of form and get dropped, then you have to be ready to get in and take that opportunity and make sure make sure you're there fighting for it. Because if you can come in for a guy who's badly out of form, let's see, let's say Rossi goes totally out of form, he fails in three consecutive series, and they say, okay, sorry, Rossi, we're going to set you out. We're going to give Kyle a chance. We're going to give Hamza a chance. Then they need to really make sure they stamp their authority in that series against a stronger team than the Netherlands. Make sure that everybody sits up and take notice. Give three back-to-back performances. Say, I am undroppable now. And that's mm-hmm. how you get your foot in the door. So right now, probably not. Probably it's going to be tough to get, get into that side just based on this this performance or um, form. Uh, it, it's going to be tough to, to sneak any of those main guys out. So the next ODI series will be against India. Fingers crossed, nothing happens that prevents that. But so you'll probably see similar a similar squad to what we had in the T20s, except with Milan hopefully opening with Kuni and and the team basically as I said now. So then um, Kyle would hopefully now probably be the backup wicketkeeper. I think he's definitely ahead of Klaassen at this stage, so he has that going for him. So you, you, he should be the, the backup for Quinny in terms of keeping. Um, and then Hamza will be around. He just has to keep living on the domestic scene. Ryan Rickleton, same. There's not really much more he can do than just doing what he does now. Um, it's just it's, it's unfortunate that he hasn't had that opportunity yet. I would have definitely picked him um, in that first game maybe he would have scored runs as well um, coming in at the first game. He could have, in my opinion, I would have definitely played him ahead of Hendricks. I don't think we're learning anything from playing Hendricks in ODIs at this stage. I really don't, because I don't see him being picked in the first 11 in ODIs. Um, and if if we don't see that, why are we still hanging around with him mm. at this stage? Because he hasn't... He's, he's almost in a similar boat to what Markram is in ODIs, except... He's got five year, about five years on Markram. He's five years older. Um, he has uh, he doesn't have a great strike rate. So I don't see the point of playing Hendricks when you could have given an opportunity to Ryan Rickleton. Do nothing you? against him. Nothing against Hendricks. I, I don't really don't have a problem. But it, it I mean he's a good batsman, but it it just doesn't seem like it would make sense if you're looking yeah. at who would be our backup going into the twenty two. 23 World Cup, in my mind, it would rather be Ryan Rickleton than it would be um, Reese Hendricks. Yeah, for me, if you have an experienced guy, I have no problem with them picking experienced guys, particularly with the, like Rassi van der Dussen, who's like insane in ODI cricket. Yeah. They can't drop a guy like him, but if you want a backup, I'd rather go with a youngster. So say now, for example, two averages are similar in domestic cricket. I'd rather pick the younger guy than the older guy purely because of the experience that the younger guy will get out of the inform- out of this information. And if he gets an opportunity to, to play, a 5 or 10 from a youngster is more valuable than a 5 or 10 from a guy that's already past his 30s. Um, I just think that the younger guy will learn a lot more from that same situation, uh, from yeah. the failure. Because, I mean, it's, it's you're bound to fail. Not everybody's going to be like Rassi and score consecutive runs every single game that he plays. So... Yeah. You're bound to fail as a batter, and I think that a younger a younger guy will get more out of a out of the failure than a than a than a than a more experienced guy. Yeah, I used I used Rossi as an example, but I don't think he would actually. I don't like to actually think he would go to three no, series without scoring. It's not not for one second. Not with the way of he's playing. Um, uh, Quinny might. That's that's something I'm 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 a bit concerned about because Quinny. When he's form. has this long runs he's like excellent form for a few series like he's unstoppable and nobody really wants to bowl at him and then this the next moment he's out of form and then he's out of form for a long time so it, it's it's a tough one so i hope going into the next year's world cup he has to has to perform we can't have Quinny going to every world cup and not performing because that's what's happened now since at least the 2015 world cup 
he hasn't performed in any any big stage event and we really need him to and if he doesn't i think like somebody like ryan rickleton is the perfect type of replacement also a left-hander can also keep if necessary is explosive so he is not beyond being dropped in my opinion no matter how good he is no matter how we know he can perform it's one thing knowing how he can perform it's another thing actually performing when it matters 100 percent true and guys that's where we're going to leave you tonight with the podcast show hope you guys enjoyed this episode thanks a lot for coming on a teacher to run off um, it's also very late for him over there. So thanks a lot, Aticha, as well, for coming on and for all of you guys joining us in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine Monthly. The link is in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell for all future videos as well. You obviously know that the Sunday podcast is every single evening. On a Sunday evening at, at 8, between 8 and 8.30, we'll, we have starts between those two. It's either 8 or 8.30 that will start. Um, so stay tuned for that. And we will be back again tomorrow with another daily show. So looking forward to hearing from you guys again tomorrow. We'll see you very soon. Take care, everyone, and have a blessed, blessed week.